Everybody's been saying that you're up to no good. Everyone has been telling me that you got me hooked. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I've got my studio lights going, so one side and another. Sorry if there's any shadowing, but that's the best I could do. The weather has been gloomy all day, but uh, you got to, to go with it. So I will catch you up what has happened here if you haven't seen the previous video. I have used my handmade vegan watercolor set, which is the ultimate palette and it houses five of my favorite color mixes that I gravitate towards all the time in my paintings, in my illustrations. So therefore created my own mixtures to fit the exact tone that I like to use. So we've got the chartreuse, we've got the quinacridon gold uh, deep, and we've got strawberry velvet, cobalt teal, and finally green gold deep. So, here I have used basically the color palette of the three colors, chartreuse, cobalt teal, and strawberry velvet, to demonstrate the kind of color palette you can get using these colors. But this is the color wheel that you can see here. Here, however, I have used all five of the colors, and I just um, used this mini set of the half pants, which has been sold out long time ago and basically I now have the tube sets available. It is on a fantastic discount right now so if you're interested go to alonacreates.com. You will also find a number of different stamp sets that I use to create these color wheels. I have a variety of different ones so you can see them all there. In this color group what I have done is I have created a different color palette just by swapping one of the colors which is the strawberry velvet. I swapped it for opera pink which is not light fast and this is why I didn't include it in that set. However it creates a completely different color palette to this one. So this one is more earthy. It's got some really interesting and granulating properties in both the strawberry velvet and cobalt teal and when you mix them together and also mix them with the other colors from the set it creates really interesting mixtures. So this is the example of that and here is the one with the opera pink, so a different version. Now I have finished this side here by adding some of the pencils and today I want to talk about some of my favorite pencil sharpness because I will be working with pencils. I'll show you a couple of techniques. Also, I will show you some sharpness that I have tried and share my experience. Also, I will tell you what my kind of favorite pencil sharpness are, the ones that I use all the time and go back to. And to me, a good pencil sharpener is the key because I have to work with a very pointy bit most of the time in this particular colorful landscape style. So they always have to be very, very sharp. Also, as I do have this product and I thought I can share it with you, if you don't know, I am Durban's ambassador and I do have the privilege to try out their products. So this is something I have picked myself to try out and I had really great results. So I thought since we are on the subject of pencils, I'll share that with you as well. Okay, so I hope you're cozy. I hope you have like a little cup of warm tea going or something like a hot chocolate, whatever uh, you enjoy drinking because this is supposed to be a really cozy video. So let's now look at pencils. So the pencils I like to use are a number of different ones. I have Luminance, I have Holbein and also have a whole pack of my Derwent Lightfast in here as well as I have a very small collection of the polychromos and actually they're fantastic for keeping a sharp point so I should start using them more often. I didn't kind of enjoy them previously because I would use pencils for larger areas. However, this type of style is actually the best probably for polychromos because they hold their point very, very well. Okay, so what I have here is after we have the first step done, which is the watercolor, the second step is adding some shadowing. So what I tend to do, I'll show you in a couple of these areas, I kind of match colors of my pencils to, for example, let's say 
I want to add some shadowing to this tree. So I will go through my pencils and find a couple of matching colors. So what you want to do when shadowing, or what I tend to do is I don't go too far off from the color because I don't want to distract with another color. I want it to be similar to the color that I'm working with, but also it needs to be not lighter and not matching, but it needs to be slightly darker so that we can get that shadowing effect. So the color I have here is Apricot by Derwent Lightfast. And now I need to bring it to a really sharp point. So I will show you the sharpener that is always on my desk. It is easy to get for me. I always have it there. It has a large compartment here to keep the shavings so that I don't need to empty it very often. And I can focus on just sharpening my pencil quickly and go back to my project. So this is the pencil sharpener that I do use a lot of the times have no problems, it works really well, it's very practical and I just love the look of it as well. I think it's quite quirky. It has a little bit of a retro look and it's actually a 100 years cum um, anniversary pencil sharpener. Great sharpener and what I do then is I go into the line and just add it. Usually I have to be right above it but I can't do it because <laughs> you won't see what I'm doing otherwise. So I'll just talk you through and I'll keep a distance. But just to let you know, this type of work, I tend to be right over it so I can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't have a fantastic control over my wrist. It is quite easy for me to mess it up if I am not exactly over it. So what I'm gonna do is after creating that outline, I am now softening things and bringing them slightly more towards the middle but not too far because I want to maintain the watercolor effect and the watercolor is the main medium of my art but I do like the detail so I'm also going to add it here in this corner because otherwise it's just a little bit too pale here so I'm going to shadow a little bit of it here as well so you can see we have added some dimension. When I'm using it lightly, I make sure it blends into nothing. And this is when I stop. So very light touch when blending things. Before I go ahead and show you a few more techniques, I will also now go through my sharpeners and tell you what else I like using. So here is another great substitute if you can't get the 100 years comb sharpener. I find that the sharpener itself works exactly the same. The, the feeling I have when sharpening a pencil feels exactly the same. So I don't know if, if there's a similar technology within the sharpener, but basically the sensation for sharpening the pencil is very much identical. There is a benefit of having a large pencil as well as a small. So I think I can, well, let's try this one together. So I've got an Albrecht Dürer Magnum. So this is a jumbo pencil. And let's see if I can get that to a sharp point. Yeah, it does sharpen it, although I do have some breakage in the pencil. So keep in mind, these are super, super jumbo. And also you have a compartment, not as big, so it does fill up a lot faster, but it is very similar in the sense that you do have a compartment. It's easy to clean. All you do, basically, you just pull this bit, so hold it here and pull it out. It took me a little while to figure out, but pull it out right above a bin. Don't do this on your desk because there is nothing here. So this bottom here is holding all the shavings. Once you pull it out, it's just going to dump onto your artwork. So don't do it over your artwork, do it straight over the bin or wherever you are emptying your sharpener. So keep that in mind. Another pencil sharpener that I absolutely love, but it's not very practical. I love the look of it. It sharpens beautifully. I think it might be a comb as well. It's like a shape like a brass bullet basically, but it doesn't have any compartment. So I kind of stopped using it for it, but it used to be my favorite for a while until I realized when I'm working, I don't like to kind of have shavings on my desk. Even if I use like a little 
compartment or something to empty it into it just is a lot easier to use something that has already a compartment attached to the sharpener another pencil sharpener that i used to use and i don't anymore because i don't think it's fantastic is this one here this is the faber castell you will see this pencil sharpener on like pretty much everywhere it's quite common and you clean it again it has a compartment you just pull it out and you clean it that way the problem with it as soon as you open up bits fall onto your sketchbook if you do it like that or onto your desk so it's not a great design in my view because you have to you will tilt either side of them so when you're closing it or when you're opening it but it does have a compartment it um i don't remember doing it's such an amazing job sharpening it's okay it's not bad but just keep in mind there's a color grip there is a universal two grips and i don't like the color grip it's basically it's getting stuck in there it works here in the universal so i don't know i just find it quite confusing and not great so here we go i i did break some of the pigment off here in the color grip so go figure i'm not using it anymore uh, i think i might actually give it away to my son so that would be fine for him and uh, my son is seven so <laughs> it'll be okay for a child to use but i wouldn't recommend it if you are like a if, if you want to take art seriously basically another recent addition to my sharpeners which i actually forgot about because i had it stored uh, on my shelf and you know organizing things i just kind of forgot about it is this one here so this is the Durvand, I forgot the name for it, but it has, it's like automated, it has batteries in there and it's got nice large compartment for the shavings. Okay, so I don't want to do it over my sketchbook again, but basically you kind of push one bit to one side or another side and that's how you clean it. But again, don't want to do it right now. I don't remember having any problems with it, so it was fairly simple. So what you do is you push here, it says push. In fact, you just basically slide it towards that side and it opens up these holes for your pencils. One is a large one, one is a small one. Don't think I tried a large one. Let's do it together. Oh, it did a fantastic job. So it worked really well here on this jumbo pencil. And as you can see, it is really quite big. And the small one is just perfect for any pencil. So whatever I'm using, uh, whether I'm using the Caran Dash gets slightly stuck there, slightly thick. But although it's, I think it's the same thickness as the Durvant, it might be marginally bigger, but obviously Durvants are fine. So what I do is just go in and out it does such a fast job so don't stick it there because you will lose a lot of pencil just go in and out that's how i do it and if it's not enough then go in again and out again it's so fast so quick and once i pull this out a couple of days ago i'm actually noticing all i want to use is just this sharpener because it's even faster than this all I do is I don't need to even pick it up I'm just showing it to you it's on my desk so as I am drawing I just stick it in there out and there we go so the luminance get a little bit stuck in there but it's not stuck completely but you have to sort of yank it out uh, whereas with the Durbans is fine the other ones that I showed you so these two are fine with the luminance as well so in case you're a luminance lover then um, just to let you know but I'm still using it with luminance just need to be aware that you just need to put a little bit of power into it now another pencil sharpener that I will show you because I have it but I'm not really getting on with it I was very excited about it and I wanted to have one of those really kind of you know professional sharpener so this is the super point manual and basically um it's by derwent it's nice and heavy and it's got a huge compartment for shaving so this is you know big very very big so you just slide it in there this is what it looks like from the front it has a little handle here 
and what you do is to insert your pencil, I don't know if you can see, but I'll tilt it that way. So you've got these blades there that keep your pencil really kind of strongly in place. So what you do is, again, push this one, hold both fingers and just push that one to the side. It opens it up, you slide in the pencil and then you basically you know it stands on the table you don't need to hold it obviously and then I don't remember which side but one of the sides you turn it and it shaves the pencil to this really really beautiful point so out of them two I'm going for this one 100% purely because these blades leave a mark on the pencil and I cannot stand that at all I love my pencils to look beautiful it drives me nuts to have like ridges on my pencil and it does it more to Caran Dash. It does it less to the Durban's Light Fast Pencil because of the wood that they're using. I think it's harder than the uh, Luminance wood. However, it still does leave marks. And I even tried because I liked how, how it sharpens the pencil. So I even tried to put some masking tape or something like um washi tape over the area uh, where it's going to touch but even then because they're so so strong blades or whatever but the, you know the handles that keep the pencil in place basically it even pushes through and makes a mark although a softer mark but still a mark on the wood even regardless of using some sort of protection there so go figure and then obviously you know if you want to sharpen a pencil adding a masking tape and then doing it manually and then removing the tape is just really time consuming so for that reason I'm not using it at all which is a shame because I want to love it but I I just don't get on with it purely because of the marks it leaves everything else if you don't mind marks then absolutely beautiful sharpener does a great job however this one uses batteries but it's it's stunning it's just beautiful it also looks really nice on the desk it's matte and just got a really kind of cool look to it so I, I really enjoy it I like the heaviness of it as well finally what I want to mention to you is basically a nice eraser this is also automatic so if you like things to be automatic I thought you might want also to know about this uh, eraser so this is a rechargeable eraser so you don't need to use any batteries it comes with a USB charger and it lasts a really long time so here's a little button and you just literally push it and it starts rotating the eraser really fast and you can get great results it comes with loads of refills and then also you can if you're working with like smaller areas like I'm doing here Keep in mind, some pencils erase better than others. Even colored pencils, they do erase, but depends how hard you pushed, it depends how big the mark was, etc. But uh, they do work. So here we have an adapter for the small eraser, and that's to go into really small areas. So you just push it in here like that, and you take this one out, push this one in, and use it as an eraser the same way and when you finish it just pull out the eraser slightly more don't wait until it kind of is completely flat because then you will struggle to get it out of the plastic bit so make sure there's enough for you to use to pull out slightly more until you finish it off and then use another refill same thing goes for this one so in fact you see this is too short now you don't want to make any marks on your paper from the metal so I'm going to pull it out about this way and now I have enough eraser you do go through a lot of it if you need like a large area erased however if you're working with something as small as this then it's a good eraser to work with Okay, so let's show you a couple more techniques and then I want to show you the different sharpeners. So what did I use? Did I use the comb before? I can't even remember. So let's use the Durvent automatic one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it here. In and out. That's it. 
and then I'm going to draw in the lines on the field like that nice and sharp and works beautifully I'm also going to do that over here Then when I want to add some detail, say for example, I'll go for a green pencil. Let me get a Derwent green pencil. So I've got grass green here and this time I'll show you in here. So really easy, really buttery. It's um, gliding quite smoothly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some of these marks to suggest leaves. Again, I need it to be super, super sharp, super pointy, so that my marks are not too big. So here, for example, I messed it up because the pencil broke as I was working with it and then with well, the tip and I ended up with larger marks than I like to have, but generally I like the marks to be quite small. So hopefully you can see that way. I'm going to show you the um, eraser just because we are on this subject and I want you to see how, how sort of it, um, it works. So here I've done some sketching with my son over the half term and let's see, so we've got some marks that printed on the other side. So it completely took it off in this area. One thing you'll need to get used to it's quite powerful. Once the mechanism is on, just make sure you hold or you rest your wrist somewhere and are very steady because if you don't do that, it will just start moving like this. It will dance all around your sketchbook page. Let's say there's this mark here that I want to raise, which is a lot stronger. Let's see if it's going to work. So there is an element of removing some of it, but not all of it. So again, it works different on different pencils, different colors, different brands. So it's something that you can definitely use. Just be aware that it might not remove like a really strong line and it might not remove it 100%. Especially if I'm uh, like tracing something or sketching just with a graphite pencil, it does a really good job. So I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.